Hello, welcome back. So, in this lecture, key results from the abrasive wear studies of tungsten carbide cobalt coatings will be discussed. So, tungsten carbide can cobalt material is usually called as a hard material and it is a candidate material for varieties of engineering applications. For example, cutting tools, rock drill trips and also the tools and dies in metal forming. So, the tungsten carbide cobalt material is generally found failed because of the metal binder removal followed by the fracture of these tungsten carbide grains. But all these information is available for the tungsten carbide cobalt bulk material, whereas the wear behavior of the tungsten carbide cobalt coating is not well understood. So, in this lecture, we will see the salient results obtained in the abrasion wear behavior of tungsten carbide cobalt coatings. A tungsten carbide with 12 percent of cobalt was coated by a detonation coating process. The coating thickness of around 350 micron meter with uh, uh, was obtained and in, in this detonation coating three levels of oxygen to fuel ratios were maintained and the coating was done on the mild steel substrate. So, generally the tungsten carbide cobalt this coating is generally reported to fail because of the decarburization. The decarburization is a function of the oxygen to fuel ratio in the detonation gun process. So, in this study three different oxygen to fuel ratios which we call OF ratio were used. So, 1.16, 1.50 and 2.0 and you can see the coating is around 350 micron meter was obtained and the roughness is between 3.5 to 5 micron meter and the density also varies from around 13.7 to 15 gram per cc with a variation of the porosity from 0.3 to 0.6 percent and the hardness also vary from 9 to 11 giga Pascal. Similarly, the elastic modulus also vary from 290 to 300 giga Pascal. So, if you can see this roughness variation probably is because of the smoothening of the tungsten carbide cuboids with the change in the oxygen to fuel ratio. So, and correspondingly there is a change in the hardness and elastic modulus. For the comparison, the abrasion wear was also done on the tungsten carbide 12 percent cobalt bulk material. Bulk material has a representative hardness around 12.85 giga Pascal and a modulus of around 565 giga Pascal. So, you can see the hardness is more than that the hardness of the coated surface. And as the coating was done on the mild steel, the mild steel was also studied for their hardness and the modulus and the roughness. So, the coating gave a microstructures which has a different characteristics with respect to uh, the change in the oxygen to fuel ratio. And the numbers of densities of these cuboids of this tungsten, carb tungsten co carbide are lower when you have a oxygen to fuel ratio higher compared to that as you obtained for the lower oxygen to fuel ratio. So, if you compare with this bulk to sintered the similar microstructure only difference is these cuboids these particles of tungsten carbide are appearing on the surface clearly. Predominantly there is a brighter zones in the coated microstructures and the and the bright regions are the decarburization regions. You can see the decarburization regions are more when you have a, a coating done with the higher oxygen to fuel ratio. 
in another study it was found that around 45 percent decarburization in case of the coating done in the oxygen to fuel ratio of 2. Whereas, very small around to 4 to 5 percent decarburization was found when the oxygen to fuel ratio is of 1.16. So, with different with the change in the oxygen to fuel ratio the decarburization was also increased. Uh, in this study the abrasives used were silicon oxide, aluminum oxide and silicon carbide. Silicon oxide of around 11.75 giga Pascal hardness was selected which is actually similar to the hardness of these coatings right. And then extremely harder abrasive of silicon carbide was also used the hardness is around 28.5 giga Pascal. And also aluminum oxide particle having an intermediate hardness of 20.5 giga Pascal are also used. You can see the size of the particle varied between 150 to 200 micrometer for the different abrasives. So, these abrasives were used to study the abrasion wear of the tungsten carbide cobalt coating. So, these abrasion abrasive wear was done using a dry sand abrasive wheel and then we get an abrasive wear rate determined in terms of volumetric material removal per revolution. So, you can see for comparison the tungsten carbide cobalt bulk material was also studied for the abrasion abrasive wear. So, first of all a comparable abrasion wear rates were obtained for the coatings done with the oxygen to fuel ratio of 1.6, 1.16 and 1.15 almost comparable with for any abrasive. Whereas, the coating done with the oxygen to fuel ratio of 2.0 exhibited a remarkably higher wear rate. With respect to the abrasive used the silicon carbide abrasive always gave a higher abrasion wear rate. Whereas, the silicon oxide abrasive gave a always lower abrasion rate. In addition to that one important point is that tungsten carbide cobalt coatings the abrasive wear rate is in the range of 4 to 16 10 power minus 3 mm cube per revolution which is substantially superior to the uncoated mild steel with abrasive wear rate in the range of 200 to 430 into 10 power minus 3 mm cube per revolution. So, a higher uh, the abrasion uh, wear rate was higher for the coatings than that of the bulk material as expected, but higher wear rates are observed always when silicon carbide was used whereas, the lowest wear rate was observed when silicon oxide was used. And the, the abrasion wear rates were intermediate when the aluminum oxide abrasion were was used. So, it gave an indication that the abrasive wear is highly dependent on the abrasive particles we are using. So, it is very important to understand with respect to the hardness of this abrasive particles used. So, in this study a ratio of the hardness of the particle to the hardness of the coating is studied with respect to the abrasive wear rate. You can see the abrasive wear rate as a function of this hardness ratio of the particle to the target. So, abrasive wear rate increases with increase in value of this ratio for any abrasive, but the rate at which the abrasive wear rate increases is different from one particle to another particle. So, the rate at which the abrasive wear rate increases with increasing this ratio appears to be dependent on the coating as well. So, you can see the increase of increase of the wear rate is almost two factors with the change in abrasive from silicon oxide to silicon carbide abrasive for those coatings obtained with a 1.16 and 1.50 oxygen to fuel ratio, but that coating obtained using a higher oxygen to fuel ratio of 2.0 gave 
an increased wear rate of almost a factor of 4 with a change in abrasive from the silicon oxide to silicon carbide. So, we can say that silicon carbide is very much effective in causing the cracking and then more abrasive wear. So, and then this particularly observed in the coatings obtained with 2.0 and 1.5 oxygen to fuel ratio. The worn surface analysis is also studied for the bulk as well as the coating. The bulk tungsten carbide cobalt material after wear shows there is a removal of this binder phase. You can see the re removal of this binder phase, right? Binder phase, and then there is a removal of this tungsten carbide cuboids by cracking, right? So, you can see lot of cracking and then their fracture. So, the mechanism is like that. First of all, the binder phase is removed followed by the cracking of this tungsten carbide cuboids which stands on this surface. So, once the they fractured the total material is removed uh, failed. So, this mechanism is change uh, does not change with abrasive used. However, the intensity of the wear is higher when we use the silicon carbide which is a harder abrasive than compared to the, the abrasive wear obtained when the softer abrasive silicon oxide. Now, let us see the worn surfaces of the tungsten carbide cobalt coating. So, these are the worn surfaces of the coating obtained with a 1.16 oxygen to fuel ratio. So, you can see there is a change in the mechanism than that we saw in the bulk material of tungsten carbide cobalt. So, the weak bonding of the tungsten carbide to the cobalt leads to easy pull out of this tungsten carbide cuboids in case of coatings as compared to the bulk tungsten carbide cobalt. And with respect to the effect of abrasive, harder the abrasive, greater is the intensity of this pull out. So, you can see lot of pull outs in case of the harder abrasive. These are the worn surfaces of the tungsten carbide cobalt, the, co the uh, tungsten carbide cobalt coating with an oxygen fuel ratio of 2.0. You can see the extensive material removal with large patches of this material abraded and then this is delaminated. So, the oxygen to fuel ratio of 2.0 coatings are heavily decarburized as I told previously the decarburization is of the order of around 45 percent. So, because of the heavy decarburization that results in the solution of the large amounts of tungsten and carbon in the binder phase. So, once this is dissolved that leads to binder phase becoming harder and brittle. So, once the binder phase become becomes harder and brittle, so you have these cracks propagating easily along this weak intersplat boundaries. So, such a propagation is possible even at a lower stress levels. So, there is a easy propagation of the rim of these pre existing cracks and then that results into network of these cracks and hence you get a large amount of material removal. So, when you have a decarburization maximum that we found in the oxygen to fuel ratio of 2.0, you see large patches of this material and then their delamination. So, the subsurface cracking can also be understood. So, you can see the bulk tungsten carbide cobalt subsurface damage. This damage appears to be negligible irrespective of the hard uh, abrasive used, but the subsurface damage is more apparent in the tungsten carbide cobalt coating in, uh, but it is still confined to very small regions underneath the surface. Okay. Both cases of silicon oxide abrasive or the silicon carbide abrasive, but if you see the damage occurring for the coatings done with the higher oxygen to fuel ratio of 2.0. The subsurface damage is extensive, you can see 
the cracking is extensive that extend to a long a substantial depth. The depth is around 50 to 125 micron meter till that depth you have a network of these uh, subsurface cracks. So, this also indicates the severe wear occurring in the coatings done with the maximum oxygen to fuel ratio of 2.0. So, the crack develops and propagates along the intersplat boundaries observed in a high magnification image of the subsurfaces. You can see so many cracks they, they network and then you will have a severe wear happening because of this networking of this crack at the subsurfaces along these intersplat boundaries. So, intersplat boundaries are the stress concentrators. So, even the low levels of external stress there is a large amount of cracking possible along this boundary and then leads to networking, networking of the subsurfaces and then removing the material from the surface in a larger extent. So, this subsurface cracks and then resultant damage can also be understood with respect to the subsurface crack zone width and the abrasion wear rate behavior. So, here the abrasion wear rate is plotted as a function of subsurface crack zone width. So, we found the subsurface crack are dominant in case of the tungsten abide cobalt coating done with the oxygen fuel ratio of 2.0 for, for the test done with uh, aluminum oxide, silicon carbide and silicon oxide as well as that done with the uh, coating oxygen fuel ratio of 1.0 in case of silicon carbide because silicon carbide is the harder abrasive. So, all these four coating gave an abrasive wear rate linear with the subsurface crack zone width. So, you can see the linear dependence of this abrasion wear rate with the subsurface crack zone width. So, we can confirm that the subsurface cracking is responsible for the higher abrasion wear rate. Finally, concluding the key results obtained in this study, the abrasive wear of the detonation sprayed tungsten carbide 12 percent cobalt coating exhibit a linear increase in the wear rate with an increase in the abrasive hardness. In terms of abrasives, the use of silicon carbide abrasive always resulted in a highest abrasion rate, whereas the use of silicon oxide resulted in always the lowest abrasion wear rate and always the aluminum oxide abrasion, aluminum oxide abrasive gave a intermediate wear rates and this is same for the both bulk material as well as the tungsten carbide cobalt coating. Abrasive wear is controlled by the tungsten carbide cuboid cracking and then fracture in case of bulk tungsten carbide cobalt, whereas tungsten carbide cuboid pull out is observed in case of coatings. In Wear occurs by intersplat cracking induced delamination in the coatings deposited a with a oxygen to fuel ratio of 2.0. So, this intersplat cracking induced delamination is dominant at a higher oxygen to fuel ratios and lower oxygen to fuel ratios always gave tungsten carbide cuboid pull out in case of coatings deposited at oxygen fuel ratios of 1.16 and 1.50. In contrast, wear occurs by intersplat cracking induced delamination in the coatings deposited at an oxygen to fuel ratio of 2.0. Further, the extent and the depth up to which the intersplat cracking occurs also agrees well with the abrasive wear rate in case of coatings primarily worn by the intersplat cracking induced delamination. So, this particular study necessarily indicate the influence of the oxygen to fuel ratio in detonation sp spray coating of this tungsten carbide cobalt on the mild steel 
on the abrasion wear. Thank you.